Hey guys and welcome back for another ANSYS video tutorial. Today's tutorial will be a linear buckling analysis of an I-beam. We'll begin by setting up the model, applying the loads and verifying the buckling results with hand calculations. So let's get started. We will begin by opening up the ANSYS Workbench interface and then drop in two analysis systems. The first one will be a static structural system. So click and drag it onto the project schematic. And then the second will be the eigenvalue buckling or in older versions will be called linear buckling. Now when you drag this in, drag it over cell number four, which is the model. By doing this, you're gonna be sharing the engineering geometry and model data with the buckling analysis. Once that's done, we want to link up the solution results for the static structural with the setup for the eigenvalue buckling. So once a normal static structural analysis will be completed, the solution results will be then inputted into the buckling analysis to calculate the modes and critical load values. So once that's done, we're gonna go into units and make sure that we have our units for this tutorial set to US customary. And we're also gonna click here and click on display values in project units. Next, we'll open up engineering data, click on engineering data sources, and then under general materials, we're going to add structural steel as our material. Next, if you unclick on engineering data sources, we're going to change the Young's modulus just for this example. Instead of 2.9 to the 7, we're going to put 3.0e to the 7. Once that's done, we'll go and close the engineering data. And now we can see that our engineering data is complete and all the information has been inputted. Next, we'll head over to Geometry by double-click on cell 3, Geometry. This will load up Design Modeler. Once Design Model is loaded up, we're going to go into our units and choose Inches. And then we're going to go to the XY plane, click on this button here to look at this plane, and then go into the Sketching tab, and we're going to draw a line. And now, in this case, you could actually draw the section, the actual section of the I-beam, but to simplify this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a line body and then applying a section to it with ANSYS built-in sections. So let's click here at the origin and then let's draw a line up over here. And then we'll click on dimensions and then under making sure general is selected, we'll click on the line and drag out a value here. And we're going to choose a hundred inches for the length. Now as you can see, it went out of the window. We can click on this button to zoom to fit and there we can see our line. Now go back into modeling and expand the XY plane, click on sketch, and now we need to convert this line, uh, sorry, the sketch to a line. And then we're gonna click on apply and then generate that. And then once we have a line body, we can now uh, create a section to apply to this line body. So we're gonna go into concept, cross sections, and we're gonna hit I section. Now for this I section, I'm gonna be taking some data from the internet so if you go ahead and head over to engineeringtoolbox.com, I'll have this info in the uh, link below. We're going to be using uh, the same example that they use over here. They're using an aluminum I-beam, and in our case it's steel, but I'm just going to take the uh, same dimension. So if you click on this, you'll be routed to this page, and these are going to be the dimensions that we're going to be using. So the depth of 7, uh, width of 4.5, etc., etc. et cetera. Et cetera. And I've actually put this into an Excel sheet over here, so we can go ahead and input this data from here. So let's go ahead and input that data. So the first one over here is going to be 4.5. The next one over here, 4.5. The height is going to be 7, or sorry, the depth. And T1 over here will be 0 0.38. And T2, 0 0.38 and T1 will be 0 0.23. Now that our cross section is done, we can go ahead and click on the line body and assign this I-beam to our line body. And that's it. Let's go ahead and close out of Design Modeler. And now we can see that our geometry information has been completed. And now we will double click on cell four to launch the mechanical interface. All right, so now in mechanical interface, we can see here that, that we have to assign a material for our line body. So we can go into the line body and choose our structural steel. And then next we can go and generate a, a quick mesh. Now it's a bit too coarse, so what we could do is instead of choosing a element size, um, 
we can just uh, we can just change the relevance to fine, and that will automatically update the mesh to a slightly finer mesh for us. There we have a much finer mesh. And now for this case, we're going to have the bottom fixed and the top free. So that will be the uh, case that we're going to be analyzing. So we're going to go ahead and insert a fix support. And we're going to choose a point since this is a line body. And we're going to choose the bottom here and click apply. So the bottom will be fixed. Right click again and then we're going to insert a force. And that force will be at the top here and then we'll click on apply. And instead of a vector, we're going to use components. And in this case, we can see here that we want the force to be acting this way. So it's going to be in the negative Y direction. And then just before, we're going to change our units here to, again, US customary. And we're going to put here in the Y minus one pound force. Now, once that's done, we can go and add some results to our solution by right clicking. And then we'll add a total deformation result. And we can also add in the eigenvalue buckling analysis um, total deformation results. So let's go ahead and solve this by clicking on the solve button over here. All right, and there we have it. So as you can see here, we have our load multiplier, which is basically the critical load at which this beam will buckle. So as you can see, because we put one, the load multiplier is exactly the force that's going to be required to buckle this. So it's going to be 42,714 pounds force. And if we check here our deformation, we can see here how much the uh, beam has been deformed. But obviously, it's going to be extremely small because our force is extremely small right now. Now, if we head back to our Excel sheet, let's just go ahead and check this load multiplier value. So as you can see here, I've created this Excel sheet. And this is based on the, on the eigenvalue buckling formula, which can be found at this website over here. So as you can see, um, column will fail by buckling when their critical load is reached according to the Euler column formula, which is this formula over here. Now, this is the force allowable. N is a factor based on the loading condition. And in our case, we have a fixed free end. So that's going to be a N of 0 0.25. Next, what we need is our modulus of elasticity of the material, the length of the column, and the moment of inertia of the section. So as you can see here, they do a little example. And now I've put all that information here in this Excel sheet. So here for E steel, I put in the uh, value. And for the moment of inertia, I took this again from the engineering toolbox website, which is the 5.78 here, which is IY, which is the minimum. IX is obviously going to be a lot higher. So we want to choose the minimum in this case. And then here we have L. And then again, I put in this formula over here, and n is 0.25. And using this formula, we can calculate 42,784. So this is, I guess you could say, the hand calculation, whereas ANSYS over here shows 42,714. So we're pretty close. Next up, you, you'll notice that there are different mode shapes here. So at the bottom, we have the first mode shape and the second mode shape for the buckling. So as you can see here, we have mode one being displayed. However, if you wanted mode two, you can let's say click on mode two and then create mode shape results for this. Next, you'll see here a total deformation that's been added and you can evaluate these results. And now you get the second mode shape for this analysis. You can also go ahead and play this animation to see the buckling deformation. And if you want to go back to the first one, we can go and we can click on that again. And then we can write, we can go and click on play again to see that animation. So typically the beam will buckle in the first mode shape. And you can also add more mode shapes if you'd like. In analysis settings, you can, you can select here the max modes to find. So you can change this value to whatever you want. Next up, let's add an actual load to this. So let's say we're actually designing this for 10,000 pound force. So let's go ahead and put in our actual design value. And let's go ahead and restart this whole calculation by right clicking anywhere and clicking on salt. So once that's done, we can see here now we have a much higher uh, total deformation. And if we go into the mode shape, we can see that now the multiplier has been divided by 10,000. So now we have 4.2. So this, this is essentially, you can say, our safety factor before this beam will buckle. So in this case, we have a factor of four. Now, it's always good practice to check for the stress in this case. So we can go into solution, right click, click on beam tools. And then under beam tools, we can evaluate these results. 
And here we have our direct stress. This is in pound per square foot, but if we click on, let's say, millimeter kilogram, we can see 14 megapascals, which is well below the yield strength for steel. So we can see here that we're safe. So that concludes the tutorial for the ANSYS linear buckling. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you next time.